Hi, Sally Walker here, your hormone and slow age expert. So what would be good to eliminate to help increase your metabolic health? Mm. Okay, so top of the list, sugar or glucose. Okay, let me say glucose. I must stop saying sugar because it's not the right word. Sugar is always a combination of two sugars. It's glucose will always be one of them, fructose another, galactose a third. So it's a combination always of glucose and one of the other sugars. So uh, removing glucose or controlling how much glucose that you're eating in every meal. And just remember that every single carbohydrate, I don't care what you call it, I don't care if you call it starches, I don't care if you call it sugars, I don't care if you call it pasta rice, potatoes, root vegetables, uh, leafy greens, nuts, seeds, etc., etc., um, milk, sugar, fruit, I don't care what you're calling it. Any of these foods will end as glucose and too much glucose is too much glucose. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's one, the first one on the list. You must control how much glucose that you are uh, partaking in, in your meals. Okay, so it's low carb. That's what it's called. 30, 40 grams of glucose per meal in whatever um, you know, disguise it might have fruit or veggies or root veggies or potatoes, etc., etc., bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so that's the first one on the list. The next one, a very close second, is omega 6 fatty acids, so the linoleic, as they're called, acids. Uh, these fatty acids, yes, they are called essential because we need to eat them through our diet because we do use omega-6 fatty acids to uh, to create inflammation, to create blood clotting, very important functions, but we don't want too much of it. And we also use uh, some of the uh, omega-6 fatty acids for cell membranes, especially in the brain. Mm. So it's important, but we're getting way too much of it. And most of the omega-6 fatty acids that we're eating today, unfortunately, are oxidized. So we must be very careful. You need to eliminate all these seed oils, all these margarines, all the processed foods from your diet because that's where you're getting an excess omega-6s. Mm -hmm. So be very careful of those. And, and there's a lot of signs suggesting that they may even be worse than all the sugar. So make sure you're getting rid of those. Artificial sweeteners is another one on the list, you know, so things like um, all the all the Coke Zeros and that kind of thing is not necessarily better than having um, the original. Mm. Um, things like plastics would be good to, to remove for metabolic health, um, creating all kinds of distress in the body, oxidative stress, etc. And non-stick uh, cookware, you know, so the, the Teflon things, you know, try to choose ceramic or, or cho choose enameled cast iron products, that kind of thing, or glass, use the glass. That would be good to do as well, yeah. And uh, be careful with those, um, those, um, hormone disruptors in your personal products, so you're in your creams and your lotions and your potions and your hair shampoos and your toothpaste, etc. etc. Check all the labels for those. And then another thing you need to eliminate every now and again is your chair. <laughs> you need to move around basically, yeah. So instead of sitting at your desk all day long, then stand. Can you lift your desk? Can you raise it up? Can you can you stand up and do some work, or at the very least, sit on a uh, on one of these fit balls, or sit on a stool, so you're moving around all the time, which we don't tend to do if we're sitting on a chair. Mm. And the last little thing on the list here, which I think is very important, is stop eating after dinner. <laughs> yeah. So let your evening meal be your last meal for the day, or put be the last food that you're putting in your mouth. It's all about that intermittent fasting. It's all about the time-restricted eating. So making sure that uh, at the very least you are fasting from your last meal of the day until you get to the food the next uh, morning or maybe even it's first at lunchtime. So you get those long fasting periods because these are very, very good to allow your mitochondria to, to burn the nutrients it needs to burn. It's gonna get your glucose uh, nice and st stable and low, your insulin low, so you'll be allowed to put fats and all this kind of thing. So intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, eating windows, lots of fancy names, but it's very, very, very good uh, for stabilizing and improving your metabolic health. Happy hormones, happy life.